Today we are looking at literature, uh, which is art that can be read. It's an exploration of the art form of literature. Um, literature is, of course, written stories. Um, not always stories, but usually when we think of literature, that's what we're thinking of. If you take a course, uh, courses such as English 101, English 102, the next course you will take in college is a literature course where you are study either American literature or English literature. It might be called British literature also uh, or world literature. You're going to study different uh, geographical locations and the literary stylings of that era and location in history. But literature is an art form, and it's how we as humans have expressed ourselves through time. Now, the definition, what is literature? Uh, literature defined as written art with artistic beauty. Literature can be described as written artistic expression that possesses beauty in its language, style, and composition. Uh, so literature is, of course, an art form. Uh, it's an artistic expression. Uh, how things are written can also, uh, through literature, uh, express certain things, um, but when we think about literature, we may have a certain idea of what we would consider to be um, literature. Uh, something like uh, Shakespeare, uh, the works of Shakespeare could be included, uh, plays and poetry that Shakespeare wrote, uh, War and Peace, which is a huge work by Leo Tolstoy. Um, you know, Pride and Prejudice, you know, a long novel. Um, you know, or something like uh, Peter Rabbit, which is a, a very short book for children that is considered literature. And then of course, religious texts are also considered literature, whether it be the Bible or um, the Quran, or in this case, the Bhagavad Gita. All of those are considered literature, and, and often we don't think about religious texts being literature and don't treat them as such, but we do uh, a huge disservice to that religious text when we do not see it as a piece of literature, not merely a piece of literature, uh, but grammatical form, all the rules of studying literature still apply to those religious texts. And even things like Plato's Republic, which was a book written, of course, by Plato describing the ideal society, or uh, the ideal society idea of Martin Luther King in one speech called the I Have a Dream speech, uh, which you can find on YouTube. There are videos, of course, of Dr. King uh, speaking this speech. And uh, there's a lot of uh, nature of extemporaneous um, which means that, yes, he did have a speech that was written down, but he went off the cuff. Uh, he, uh, much like a preacher, which he was, uh, said things that were not written down that just came to him. But all of these would be considered literature. Of course, there are different types of literature. Um, one of the things that are well known, of course, is fiction. Fiction is a genre of literature that involves invention or imaginative storytelling. 
It includes novels, short stories, where characters and events are created by the author. I'm not a very imaginative person. Uh, I don't read a lot of fiction. <laughs> Maybe I'm not um, imaginative or inventive because I have not read a lot of fiction. But of course, fiction uh, examples, of course, classically um, many things. Um, Harry Potter in the modern culture, Game of Thrones would be with George R. R. Martin. Of course, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series, The Hobbit. Uh, all of these are fiction. They are created stories. Stage plays. Um, now some stage plays are adapted from literary works. Uh, recently, in, in our area, we had a play of uh, George Orwell's book, 1984. Uh, it's an adaptation. That play would be an adaptation from the book uh, because the book is not written in stage play form. But, you know, it can be adapted to stage plays and was and has. Uh, poetry and song, these are literary forms. Of course, poetry, uh, you can go back to classical British poetry, poetry written by someone like Lord Byron, or Robert Browning, someone of that nature. Uh, of course, uh, Shakespeare had... Uh, Poetic sonics, sonnets that he wrote. Uh, songs are literature. We don't think about songs being literature, but they are. There are there are poems set to music, so it could be something uh, in the world world of religion, something like the the Psalms. A psalm is a poet, uh, a, a poem in a sense, and they are set to music, and often is the case, and so that is true, uh, even up till uh, much, much more modern times, in our cultural context, uh, Hank Williams, who was a country music singer, probably the first, uh, someone, some have uh, credited to him being the first rock and roll, uh, kind of rockabilly person, but not not so much the music itself or the tone of it, but uh, if you ever have an opportunity, listen to the words, because another another nickname that Hank Williams Sr. had was Hillbilly Shakespeare, because he wrote these songs. Um, and so if you ever get an opportunity to listen to the lyrics of songs by um, Hank Williams, particularly a song like, I'm So Lonesome I Can Cry, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a poem. That's what it is. It's just set to music. Or literary essays, uh, fiction and nonfiction, particularly nonfiction forms, these are considered literature. Uh, creative nonfiction, uh, this, you know, this might be something like, you know, taking the events of World War II and writing a book that blends fiction and nonfiction elements. So we'd be focusing on a character. Oh, okay. We'll say, like the movie Saving Private Ryan. Um, that was taking actual events that took place, um, but setting nonfiction elements into a or setting fictional elements into a non-fictional context. Screenplays, those are considered uh, literature. Comic strips, video scripts, you know, all of these are considered literature and more. So these are just some 
of the basic types of literature. <laughs> then literature also can be performed as a performing art. So some, some things are adopted from a literary context, you know, a book, and made into a movie or a play. Um, sometimes they're adopted from things that aren't a book and made into a movie or movie franchise. But think about something like uh, The Great Gatsby. Of course, it's a book by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And that book has been made into now multiple movies. Even recently, there was a movie just in the past decade uh, starring Leonardo DiCaprio uh, from a book that was written in the 1920s about the excesses of that era and uh, it was often often that this is the case the literature can be performed uh, certain forms of literature are meant to be performed such as stage plays video scripts in these cases uh, the written text serves as a blueprint for actors directors and production teams to bring the story of the events uh, to, to live on stage and screen. Uh, even silent reading often involves an inner voice. This, uh, when individuals read literature silently, uh, they often engage their inner voice, uh, mentally pronouncing the words as they read. This inner voice allows readers to immerse themselves in a text and experience the story as if it were being spoken aloud. And even this, you know, over the years, I have um, I've read a piece of literature, and um, not having seen anything prior to that, not having seen an adaptation of uh, that particular piece of literature at that time, and so I, in my own mind, came up with an idea of what this person might have looked like you know i i made the character in my head and then when you know it's played by gwyneth paltrow you know <laughs> um they don't look the same to me right yeah? you know or when it's uh you know les miserables and um you know it's You know, as some other actor that uh, I did not, that person didn't mentally look like that to me. Maybe you've experienced that in your life. But uh, literature is meant and has been adopted into a performing art. Some can. Uh, some, you know, manifestos typically, you know, do not lend themselves to being moved into the realm of performing art. So literature, past and present, early forms of literature, the origins of literature date back to the early forms of written expression, including clay tablets and stone carvings. However, for most of human history, literature primarily existed within the realm of oral tradition, with storytellers passing down myths, legends, and truths through spoken word. And so literature in its earliest form was oral. It was an oral communication. Uh, stories passed down. And and even in some societies up into the modern age there were things that were passed down orally that were not written down. Then you have the emergence of papyrus inks and the growth of written literature. So literature begins being written down on 
what is papyrus is basically a, uh, it's early forms of paper it's beat it's like a reed that has been beaten out um, and they begin to write on things like papyrus in order to make literature mobile. Before that, it is written on you know, caves and you know, written, carved into trees, something of that nature. So it's not mobile. So they take these reeds and they take a stone and they beat these reeds flat and then using ink or uh, blood or other materials they write down communication upon them and then it's easier to record these stories and also transport these stories moving forward and then manuscript preservation that throughout history the preservation of written works was carried out by various institutions including monasteries universities and courts and these organizations collected older writings stored them in libraries and copied them by hand to ensure their survival this painstaking process helped preserve many early works of literature so the earliest work of literature like something like Beowulf who has an unknown author that's thought to be one of if not the earliest forms or earliest written stories um, you, know, you have the Iliad and the Odyssey the Homer you know, these were well, uh, full-on novels uh, written and when they were written pre-modern era that would take a lot of a lot of room even in written form you would have a scroll that might be read in a religious service and it's not as if that person can just take that piece of paper home with them it was a scroll that was you, know, you would need a, a cart to roll and so it would have to be at a certain location like a synagogue or a monastery or a university or a court uh, so that you would be able to go to that place and read that copy and you wouldn't have it in your own well of course that changes in a modern era and that changes with the invention of the Gutenberg printing press and so as far as literature is concerned this is the greatest technological invention for literature so this invention of the movable, movable type printing press by Gutenberg uh, Johannes Gutenberg developed the movable type printing press in the 15th century it marked a pivotal moment in history of literature and human communication this revolutionary technology allowed for the efficient printing of books and documents so when this is printed the ability to be able to write down so where a scribe would have you know, hand copied one page um, and have to do it multiple times well with the invention of print and press and this movable type um, once they had everything in place of so the type for one page and by that think about the keys on an old typewriter if you've ever seen one and you know where you have the word the t-h-e well you would just take and on these little pieces on this section of 
Gutenberg's printing press, you would spell out these things using small typewriter type pieces of metal. And so you would spell out an entire page of, of everything that was said on that page, and then you would print it. And you could print it one after the other, after the other, after the other, from the time it would take one person to write that same page once with Gutenberg's printing press, you could have printed 20 pages in that time. So uh, it's a revolution. It's a, it's a great modern day invention. So it's spreading of reading and the written word. And Gutenberg's invention not only made a mass production of books possible, but it also played a crucial role in spreading literacy. As books became more acceptable, a portion of the population gained the ability to read and write. This explosion of literature and in quantity and variety, Gutenberg's printing press uh, led to explosion of literature in both terms of quality and variety with the ability to produce books at a faster rate, authors could reach a broader audience and a wide range of genres and subjects to uh, begin to be explored. Uh, I'm a student of history as well as you know, humanities and religion, things like this, uh, but where they all intersect is here. Uh, one of the periods that I am most fascinated with is the period of the Reformation. And the Reformation begins, depending on which scholar you listen to, but most of them will say that the Reformation begins in Germany in 17, oh, 1517, excuse me, with Martin Luther and the 95 Theses that he writes on the castle door at Wittenberg. There's a lot more to go on with that, but that's just the basics of it. Well... Gutenberg's printing press is uh, developed just a few decades earlier. So one of the reasons I do believe, and it's been argued, that uh, the Reformation spread as far and as fast as it did is because Luther's works were getting printed and they were getting printed quickly because of Gutenberg's invention of the printing press. Um, other reform movements had, had had tried to take place and there was aspects of them that had happened prior to that, but it seemed like the perfect storm and part of that perfect storm was the invention of the printing press. So it was a huge explosion in literature that took place with this revolution of the printing press. Now, Modern literature, and we won't talk a great deal about this, but with thousands of great works of literature in the modern era, literature has seen a proliferation of creative works. Thousands of great literary works exist, covering a wide range of genres, themes, and styles. Authors from diverse backgrounds contribute to their ever-expanding world of literature. So there is literature that is being produced now. Um, one may make the argument that the quality of literature today is not the same as in past times. That would be an argument I'd make. But, um, you know, in the, in the modern era, literature seems to be uh, a little less creative, uh, a little less um, I don't know um, I'll say a, a little less um, unique um, particularly as, as a southerner I think about the, the literature written from 
of the perspective of a southerner like you know Harper Lee's book book um, To Kill a Mockingbird I don't I don't see another To Kill a Mockingbird happen I don't see another um, William Faulkner coming anytime soon I may be I may be totally wrong that may be a renaissance one day of literature and literature from Pacific areas uh, but literature today seems to be just like everything else and it's more combative than anything else uh, but liter literature going visual through television screens of course we have that now we have ways to access literature that involves the advent of technology for many people literature is now uh, not only confined to books but also uh, expanded into visual realms through television screens, adaptations of literary works into television series and films have brought these stories to a broader audience. It's just easier um, to connect with a uh, different audience and different people through that medium. So in conclusion, that literature is a blend of written and oral expression, that literature is a unique art form that seamlessly combines written and oral expression, whether read silently or performed out loud literature, engages the senses and inter voices, making it a versatile and enduring meaning means of storytelling. And then there's a lasting impact, uh, enduring impact of cultural society that literature has played a significant role in shaping cultural and society and it really it really has uh, it reflects the values beliefs experiences in different areas or eras uh, and combines to our understanding it contributes to our understanding of human history uh, great literary works continue to influence and inspire readers sparking discussions and cultural conversations. So that is the conclusion of this presentation today. I have some discussion questions that you may consider looking over. You may see them again. Um, thank you again for watching this video and have a good day.